today we'll be going over um, a basic kind of overview of what negative numbers are. So negative numbers, before we get into that, let's go back and define what are um, positive numbers. Well, positive numbers uh, range from zero, which represents um, nothing. Then we have one, which represents one of a specific item. Like I have one candy or um, one steak, for example. Then we have two, which represents two of that item, and so on and so forth. So these are under the category of positive numbers. But what are negative numbers? Well, for example, let's, uh, let's get a guy named Bob here. So Bob, let's just name him Bob. Bob uh, has, let's say he has um, $5. Let me change that, $5, right? And he wants to buy the brand new electric scooter which is um, surprisingly pretty cheap. It's at the cost of, it's, it's at a bargain actually. The price is uh, at, let's say $10. Obviously, um, Bob does not have $10. He only has five. So what can we do? Let's say that, um, let's introduce one more character here. Let's say this is Tim. And Tim is Bob's friend. In fact, let's bring Tim over here. So Tim is Bob's friend. And he wants to help Bob. So let's say Tim has $5 also. So together, both $5 combine and they make a total of $10. And Bob gets his bike. And Bob's quite happy, but now Bob owes money. But how much does he owe? Well, Tim gave him uh, $5, remember? So therefore, later on, maybe when Bob has $5, he can give it back to Tim. But during this time, which Bob has that $5, well, he needs to give that $5 back to Tim. How can we represent this? Because if it's positive, then that means he has it, right? But this $5 does not exist yet. So Bob is thinking about this because Bob likes thinking about simple math things, especially on his brand new scooter. And he comes upon an idea. What if this is represented as the very same number? Because remember, he owes $5, but this is a positive number. And he thinks to himself, this is very, very similar to subtraction. There is a total of $5. Let's, let's get this into a math perspective. There is $5. I spend $10 for the bike. What do we get? Well, Bob thinks about it. You know, well, this 10 is basically two fives, which we can see over here is a $5, which he owes. So how can Bob do this? Well, he uh, thinks about it and he says, well, you know, if I split it up, 
this is basically the same as a 5, and then we have a minus, right? So we know that 5 minus 5 is 0. So this and this disappears because that's the $5 paying off that $5. So we can basically say this part is gone. But now Bob brings this negative sign down over here. And what does he find? Well, he finds that he can represent the same number he owes in this. It's a convenient number. But what is in front of it? Well, this, this in particular, this is called a negative sign. And Bob is correct. In order to represent this, it would be a negative sign. So now we can think about math in a completely new perspective because let's say that, let's get another example. You know, um, you know, Bob, he gets $6 one day, right? He gets a total of $6, maybe like $5 with some change. And he thinks to himself, well, I still have that negative one dollar. So, I mean, negative five dollars. So, how does that work? I still owe negative five dollars. What happens to those negative five dollars? Well, first thing is we have to identify that Bob still has negative five dollars which he owes to Tim, which he owes $5 to Tim. So what he can do is he can set it up like this. This negative five, the amount he owes, plus because we're adding on whatever money Bob already has. And um, if we consider this whole thing, we know that five plus one, five plus one is six. So let's just drag that down there. And you can see we have negative five plus six. Now, Bob is new to this new negative world. So he thinks to himself, oh, well, I I realized something. This um, five dollars and uh, one dollar, we can rearrange it however you like to one dollar and five dollars. One dollar and five dollars. And the total amount is still the same it's still $6. So if I say that, then one plus five should also be six. And, you know, Bob goes on his fingers, he counts one, and then he counts five more, and he finds out that it is indeed six. So Bob is correct. So what if Bob, Bob thinks about this and he says, well, what if I take this negative five and I take the six and I switch sides? So he gives this a try. And what he realizes is that it looks very oddly familiar to a problem he already knows. Six minus five. And this minus sign looks like the same as the subtraction sign, which is what we said before when we did five minus 10 and we split it into a five and a five, right? It was that same negative sign. So in that case, then 
6 minus 5, huh? Well, um, Bob thinks about it, and he realizes that uh, 5, he, uh, 6, he counts down by 5, uh, 5, 4, 3, 2, and then he realizes that 6 minus 5 is 1. So, then, Bob thinks about it. If this negative sign can become into a subtraction equation, we turned this simple sign, you know, this, this number, let's just think of it as a number. I turned it into a subtraction problem. Well, what if I do the opposite? And Bob's line of thinking is correct in this case. So let's move this aside. He no longer has any debt. And you know, he has his $1. But let's say now Bob is thinking about some math in general, right? So he gets out his uh, whiteboard. He has a nice big whiteboard. And he thinks, well, you know, some normal problems I've done before are like 2 minus 1 or 4 minus 2. And these are pretty simple. 2 minus 1, well, I can do that easily. On my fingers, that's just 2 and then 1, easy. And that's 1. And 4 minus 2, well, it's a bit more difficult, but... If I do 4 and I count down 2, that would be 3 and then 2. 4 minus 2 is 2. That's also easy. But now Bob, being uh, the intellectual he is, he thinks, well, what if I move these and switch them around? So he does that. And... What he realizes is, well, what, what do I do here? There's like a giant empty space over here. What do I do there? Well, Bob, obviously, he tries to think. He thinks back to when he added the money. He added a positive six over here there was a plus sign. Maybe that plus sign means positive, right? I mean, it's a fair, ass uh, fair assessment. If a negative number, for example, this negative five, has this sign in front of it, then, well, a positive number has a plus sign in front of it. So then, we can simplify this idea of addition and subtraction. Minus does not mean take away. Plus does not mean add. It does mean that, but now we can get a better definition for what it truly means. Minus, it represents this negative number. And plus, it represents a positive number. So when we combine these two together, we get uh, what we think of as addition and subtraction. For example, 3 plus 5. Well, it, it might be a bit hidden at first, but you'd realize that really there's a plus here also. We, we just don't write it because you wouldn't write that in general. But when there's between two numbers, we put a plus sign. And what we realize is we have one positive number, which is a three, and we have another positive number, which is a five. And the plus sign is what tells us that this is not a negative number. This is not a subtraction problem. Instead, we can say that this is positive and this is positive. So what that means is, since both are positive, Whenever they combine, 
using any addition or subtraction, they always create something bigger. And we can see 5, 6, 7, 8. We count up by 3 and we get 8. So let's try that with subtraction. Let's go back to our problem. Or no, no, let's 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 go back and do another example. Uh, five minus three. Five minus three. I can do that on my fingers. Five, four, three. Oh, two. Two is the answer. But another way we can think about it is well, in general, what is this type of number? Now, this is not a negative number because we know there's no negative sign in front. So this must be a positive number. And since this is positive, well, because of this negative sign, we know this 3 must be negative. So when we have a positive number and we have a negative number and they combine, well, we find that the result is smaller, right? For example, 5, let's say, is the biggest number. When we, do, when we combine it with a minus 3 or negative 3, we get 2. And is 2 smaller than 5? Yes, 2 is smaller than 5. Let's think about... Uh, another example, something which we just learned. Let's think about 3 minus 5. It's a bit uh, switched around, but in this case, we have a positive and we have our negative, but now positive is very, very small compared to this. So when we combine a positive and a negative, the negative is bigger. Something strange happens. Keep that in mind. We'll, uh, we'll get back to this. Let's go back to our example now. So we have our negative 1 and we have our 2. So we already determined that since the 2 is positive, it's a plus sign. The 4 is positive, so it's a plus sign. So. Yeah, we can say that there's a negative 1 and there's a 2. And if we think back to our older example with the negative 5 plus 6, we can rearrange it back. But let's just think about it in these terms. The negative 1 plus 2 and the negative 2 plus 4. And if we think really deeply about it, we can come to the conclusion that, you know, this is a negative and it's smaller. This is, a, this is a positive, and it's bigger. So when these combine, the answer will be smaller than this. That's what we said before over here, right? So negative 1 plus 2. And let's, let's do our addition, or what we consider addition, but in reverse. So we have our 2. Take away one, exactly like subtraction, but try to remember with this terminology, try to think of it with, with this kind of um, symbol, the negative one. And we realize that, hey, it's one. It's the same as before. Negative two and four, easy. We can also do this on our fingers. Negative two and four, one, two, we remove two fingers down. We still have two fingers up. And, you know, that means the answer is two. And just to double check, you can see two is bigger than one. So we did go smaller. And four is bigger than two. So we did get smaller. So, well, that's interesting. Now, let's go back here. This problem is really the backbone behind, well, the general understanding of 
positive and negative numbers. Because we're having a bigger negative number. But what does that really mean? So in order to find out, let's, um, let's first move this out of the way. And let's go back to our number line, which we were looking at before. Well, if we look at this, there's no space for the negative numbers. And that's interesting. Well, these are all positive numbers, so of course there can't be any space for negatives. But now, let's think about constructing a number line for all numbers. Not just positive, but also negative. How would we do that? Well, again, let's just say all numbers. And you know, let's construct the number line properly. Let's construct it with a line. So we have a line. And we have, say we have a dash over here. And this is 0. Now, um, Let's say we have a one, two, three, four, and it goes on all the way to infinity. You know, it goes on forever, right? We can get absurdly high numbers. Over here, we have negative one. Whoa. Wait a minute. We have negative one. Well, you see, the entire time, You've been learning about the number line up till here. Well, this is just half of the number line. Because if you think about it, there's a whole other side. And if negative numbers take away or subtract, well, it should be on the opposite side, right? It's like yin and yang. So we have our negative 2 negative 3, negative 4, and goes on. But it doesn't go on to infinity this time. It goes on to infinity, but we put a negative in front. And that's all for class today, guys. So we'll go more uh, in depth about this in particular, this number line, the next video. Thanks for watching.